the beginning and the end are, are the high points and in the middle it's kind of this like roller coaster of it's going to work, it's not going to work, it's going to work, it's not going to work. When you're seven months in and you're still asking yourself, is this going to work, it's terrifying. The very highest moment in this process is when you are finally standing in front of it and you're finally turning it on and it's doing what you dreamed it would be, it's always better than you expected. Figuring out how to design and build the piece, that is by far what gives me my kicks. It's also nice when the piece is, is done, but it's usually that, that initial stage is the, when you really get to sink your teeth into a problem and, and figure out how to do something uh, that usually nobody's done before. I'm Zolti, I'm the co-founder and co-director of Breakfast, which is a fairly unique art studio based in Dumbo in Brooklyn. There were three of us that started Breakfast around 11 years ago, and we had come from an entirely software background, but we were getting very tired of, of seeing digital only manifest itself in glowing pixels. And so we decided to start a studio that was dedicated to creating in-person experiences, but entirely through kinetic mediums. How can we take all of this digital stuff that exists in our world and have it manifest itself, not in a glowing pixel, but in something that speaks to people in a different way. And we've been creating these kinetic pieces ever since. Early on, it was a mix of a lot of prototypes that we created ourselves. Um, a lot of them sort of fun and silly to get the attention of companies, of people. And so most of our early work were large-scale interactive pieces that were commissioned by brands, things of that sort. And then it's really been over the last few years that we've made a much stronger push into the art world and then really into the fine art world just in the last six months. What is the art world going to think when we start calling this art and when we start hanging it or putting it into the places that is considered for fine art? One of the things the art world is struggling with is it tends to be leaning more and more towards older people, people that it, it's not, there are not a lot of 20 and 30 year olds spending a lot of money in art. And so they, they see this as a beacon, as a way that's bringing in younger people into this world. I'd say the most common reaction we we're getting is, I do not normally like this kind of thing and I absolutely love it. I think that's always been why we've gone after these tactile approaches is that a two-year-old will have the same reaction as a 90-year-old. The way that um, our pieces come about, it varies a lot. I compare it a lot to anyone that writes music. Sometimes a song comes like that and sometimes you're working on it for years. We have an idea for a medium and while we're developing it we're starting to realize what it can become. We have a couple ideas at the beginning and then it evolves. Sometimes we're not even figuring that out until we finally have it made and are playing with the software and realize what it actually is. In other cases we have come up with a concept and we are going down that path and we are making that thing for two years to get to that point. The place that we start mostly today is how do we want to connect the people experiencing our pieces? How do, where do we want to connect them to? So they're about connecting you to another place, another time, another person. We generally do that through the, the web and using a web connection and pulling in real-time data. So a lot of times we start there. This what we're looking at here is uh, one piece out of a climate change series that we're doing. Uh, this one is called uh, Mauna Loa Air. And what this is showing in this abstract pattern is the current CO2 levels in the air in Hawaii right now. So this is connected uh, to the web. It's constantly pulling in that data. And the higher those CO2 levels go, this piece will turn more and more gold. Um, if the levels drop, it will turn more green. We also have this mode where you stepping in front of it is a way for us to put you in the middle of the artwork and as a reminder, 
that you're here, part of this problem that's going on right now. And also as this data changes, uh, so the levels go up, uh, your uh, silhouette will become more and more stronger or recede depending on that, how those levels are, are going. This piece is part of the climate change series as well. Uh, this one is uh, called Lake Chapala. And uh, Lake Chapala is a lake in Mexico that's um, just uh, drying out. And this piece is also connected to the web. It's constantly pulling in data about the lake. Uh, as that water level keeps dropping, uh, the movements that you see in the, in the piece is going to subdue down to until there is no movement left. A lot of our pieces are connected to the web. That's uh, a theme that runs through almost everything that we do and uh, not just connecting our pieces to places but also connecting people to other people. When we started breakfast uh, we definitely weren't, we didn't have our heads in the fine art world. I don't think we ever imagined you know creating these smaller pieces that might go into people's homes or definitely into galleries and museums and we're sort of learning as we go. Most people still don't believe that we actually make this stuff. <laughs> and most people are confused by us because we are not a name. There's no way any one of us or any two of us or any three of us can make these things. Like it's such a collaborative effort between, you know, multiple software engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, like and so we're making all of that stuff here. It's, it's all really happening with these hands.